think we did A on the board last lesson. If we're looking at B, let's try that one today. So B, we've got Y equals X plus 1. Okay, and we know that when this thing inside the bracket, when that is greater than 0, the modulus has absolutely no effect whatsoever, right? So what we're looking at, we're breaking it up and we're going when X plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, Right, when is that going to happen? For what values of x? Well, that will be when x is greater than or equal to minus 1. Agreed? Right, so saying how we want this bit here, what we can then say is, right, for x plus 1, the modulus, what that graph is equal to is it's actually equal to x plus 1 when x is greater than or equal to minus 1. Agreed? But when it's not greater than or equal to minus 1, when it is, x is less than minus 1, everything in the modulus, or the modulus, is then negative. Does that make, that's what it's doing its work then. The modulus is actually having to do something. So when it's the negative 1, that means we've got negative x plus 1 inside the bracket. So that means here we'd have x minus 1, when x is less than or equal when and it's less than minus 1. So if you have a look at our calculator, now Finn and Kelly, do you remember how to get your modulus sign up on your calculator? And anybody else in the room? So remember we go option, numeric, absolute value and we've got x plus 1. Just check the IM view window. Oops, good. Okay, now what we've got here is basically the two functions that we're looking at. So here we've got the x plus 1 when x is greater than or equal to minus 1. Right here, that point there is minus 1. When it is less than minus 1, it's the function x take 1, minus x take 1. Agreed? Does that make sense? So you're happy with that. What you wanted to do was maybe g and h. We sort of did um, G, so let's go backwards and do H and then G. Does that sound good or do you want to do G again? Um, I don't care. You tell me, what one do you want to do? Yep. Smile. All right, so with this one, Okay, we do the same thing and if you just go and if you're just looking at that first one and you say, oh, x is greater than or equal to zero for that, you're going to have a problem because when x is zero, what zero take one? Negative one and then you're going to make the modulus be doing its thing. So when we're looking at the whole shebangabang, we actually have to say that's the biggest one there. So it's going to be when x... Um, x take 1 is greater than or equal to 0. In other words, x is greater than or equal to 1. Now, when x is greater than or equal to 1, x modulus minus modulus of x take 1, right? Um, no effect on, the modulus is going to have no effect on this stuff whatsoever. So what are we left with? We've got x minus x take 1. Yeah, x take x is no x, minus and a minus is a 1. So with this becomes just a horizontal line of y equals 1 when x is greater than or equal to 1. Does that make sense? Then we can go back and we can look at this little bit here and we can go, well, we've got x is greater than or equal to 0. But it is also, uh, so it's greater than or equal to zero, but it is less than or equal to one. So that's not written very well because it has to be in order. Yeah, baby. And it's not equal to, you happy with that bit? So this, if we're looking at our number line here, 
Okay, we've got when x is greater than or equal to 1, we've taken care of that bit. Then we're looking at, okay, what about when it is just um, less than 1? Now, if we just say less than 1, this is going to have effect on its modulus and we're missing in between the 0 and the 1 for stuff to happen. I'm not explaining this very well, but that's all right. You'll, you'll hang in there. So when we've got this, is anything happening to this modulus here between 0 and 1? No. The modulus is doing no work whatsoever, so we just have that that's going to be x. Agreed? But when it's between 0 and 1 for this, is that modulus doing some work? Yes, like think of 0.5 between 0 and, or even 0. That's going to have, the modulus is going to have to um, kick on. So we've got the minus here, we keep that. But this is where it's crazy because it's that, you think minus and the modulus. The modulus is minusing, right? So that becomes minus. Can I just go minus, minus and go to the plus here? So technically what's happening is it's going minus x take 1 because of that modulus, but I'm just going to go, yeah, yeah, that's like that. So we get x plus x, we get 2x, plus and a minus is a thing. So that becomes 2x take 1 when x is less than 1, but greater than or equal to 0. So I should have gone my colour coding there, so that's there. We've now got 0. And so what do we have to take care of in the last bit? When x is less than 0. Now what happens with that? That makes this minus. So we get minus x. And again, makes this minus. So minus, minus. So I'm not going to write that stupid thing again. It's just going to be plus x take 1. So we get minus x plus x is nothing. Minus 1. So we get minus 1 when x is less than 0. So what does this going to look like? This has a horizontal at 1. This is horizontal at 1. And this is going to be positive slope. So let's have a look. We have a rough idea. Pressure's on. Option, numeric, absolute value, x. What was it? Minus. <sighs> absolute value. <laughs> x take one. There's too many. Take plus. Bleh. Okay, so here's our horizontal line of y equals one. For x is greater than one, that's our, and then the less than. Does that make the sense? I mean, we could make another one up. You want to make another one up? Make your own. Let's make our own. And we can check it using our graphics calculator. I listened to one of my videos the other day just to check the sound. And I'm always yelling because I'm talking to the people at the back. So sorry, you have to really turn the sound down. I need to hold it out here. Good mic. Um, let's make it up. Let's go y equals... I was thinking 2. Let's go 2x. You want to go plus or take? Plus. Let's keep it simple. Oh, I'm going plus. Plus. Okay, you can do what's in the bracket. Simple, simple, but... Yep. Yeah. Five on the outside. What should we put in the middle? X take three. Oddly thinking that. Whew. All right. So from the ones we've already done, we sort of have an idea that it's going to be three bits to it already. Okay, so basically, would you agree that, yes, if I look just at this modulus, no effect for when x is greater than 0, but I can't say the same for this one. This is going to have an effect when? Sorry, it's going to have no effect for what value of x? x is greater than or equal to 3. 
So when x is greater than or equal to 3, what's happening? This, no effect, so it's just 2x. This, no effect, so it becomes 5, x take 3. Agreed? So we end up with 2x plus 5x take 15. So we've got 7x take 15 for when it is greater than 3. So now, obviously, we have to look at when is it going to be less than 3. But it is not just all the way less than 3 because, yes, that's going to make that minus. But somewhere between 3 and 0, this is going to, um, yeah, do its thing. I've now got another one to do. So that will be when it's greater than or equal to 0. So when it's greater than 0 but less than 3, this bit here has no effect. So that's still 2x. Yeah. However, this has an effect. It's going to be plus 5 minus all of that. Five times, plus 5 times minus all of that. Because that's what the modulus is working on now. It's changing that everything in there to negative to positive. So we end up now with 2x minus 5x. Negative and negative x positive plus 15. So we've got minus 3x plus 15. We? Um, what we should have done maybe was if that, if that little first bit there was instead of being 2x, what if that was x plus 1? Would it be that we're doing it from x is just greater than or equal to 0? Yeah, you could actually go all the way down to minus 1 now because the modulus wouldn't have an effect until it was less than minus 1. We can do another one of those in a minute if you so desire. Right, and the last bit then is when x is less than 0 and that's when all of it is having an effect. So we've got minus 2x plus 5 times minus x plus 3, so we end up with minus 7x plus 15. And you can graph that so that you've got 1, 2, 3 functions you can graph on your calculator and check.